Whether it's personal branding or business branding, you know that video content marketing is really powerful. So with that in mind, everyone should be a little bit more familiar with how to make better videos. Today, I'm going to share five easy ways to make better videos with any camera. So here at Video Allies, just a little background, we have a whole team of filmmakers, TV producers, news and media, and promotional video creators that have come together with over 65 years worth of experience to share with you ways to make things better. In this video, I want to make sure that it's easy for you when you have to DIY your own videos. How can you put together all of that experience and these ideas and not be overwhelmed by it? So today I'm going to bring some ideas that we use whether we're doing a music video or it could be an entrepreneur's YouTube channel, perhaps it's a short film or a full feature film. All of the tips and practices we use can be very helpful for anyone who wants to make a video. So here's where you get started. So number one, don't worry too much about your equipment. We have really great tools. This is, you know, just my phone. Obviously, I make a lot of videos on here from time to time just about my family, my dog. I don't have time to run and grab this camera. This is the new mirrorless Canon R6. I love it. We use it for music videos. Just a very quick note on cameras before I get into the steps that you need to take and that is it doesn't really matter the size of your camera if the person making the video has a really clear idea of what they want to accomplish and how they're going to accomplish it. You can make beautiful cinematic videos with your phone, something like this mirrorless R6, or something like this workhorse camera, the ADD, and this is the 90D series. They work together. They're pretty incredible cameras. They're little workhorses, and we like to use them for YouTube for a lot of maybe, you could say sneaky reasons. I love Canon because of the color. I love their menus. There's a lot of amazing things about these cameras. And if you are out and about, especially when we're out in public making video, it's a lot better to have something small like this or this than a really large cinematic camera on your shoulder or a news type rig. Because chances are, if you didn't get a filming permit, someone's gonna come and interrupt you and tell you to move on. So the five steps I'm gonna share with you are really the things that a producer thinks about. If you're doing your own videos, you need to think like a producer, and then you'll add these other skills as you go. If you can only start with your camera, at least do these things to help you, and then you can grow as your skills grow. Number one, write and pre-produce your video. Before you even start, have a plan in mind. What do you want to make it about? What's the purpose of the video? Who is it for and who's going to see it? Even with our YouTube videos, we spend a lot of time planning, writing, and pre-producing. We don't just turn on the camera and then just start speaking. We have at least spent some time researching what people are asking, what people need, what questions are out there, and what other videos are talking about. We want to make sure that this content is helpful for you. So write an outline. Pre-produce means gather your gear, pick a day when no one's going to be there so you have quiet, decide what you're going to wear, does it blend into the background, We've placed a few things back here, as you can see, that makes it a little more interesting. Shows off some ideas of cinematography. Just makes the environment a little more interesting. That's part of pre-production planning. So the final word on writing and pre-producing is, again, know who you're talking to, what you need to say, and outline it in a way that makes sense. If you need a full script, which I don't recommend for YouTube, then you might need to get like a teleprompter. But really the best thing is to have some ideas in mind and then just share from the heart what you know about that topic. It usually goes over a lot better because it's more like a conversation between me and you right now. Number two, make a very deliberate choice of your locations, especially if you're someone like a musician and you want to do a music video. This makes a really big difference. Decide if the place you're in is going to fit the presentation and the style that you're trying to put across. Uh, we've created some home studios where we can film at any time. And when we film for our clients, I usually spend almost an entire day searching for an appropriate location that matches their branding, their personality, something that's not distracting, and something that's hard right now to find um, 
everyone knows I'm picky about this, but I try not to find places with a white wall behind it because your eyes are attracted to the lightest thing in the picture. Here in this setting, I can kind of see my frame. We have some color here in the painting. We have some items that show our interest in photography and videography. I'm here centered in the picture and the rest just sort of gives some support to what's happening right here. Another important point of, the, of location is just logistics. Make sure you're welcome in that location, that you don't wear out your welcome, you don't damage anything. Be a good neighbor or a good representative for other filmmakers. Don't burn your bridges. Don't burn them for the rest of us by making someone angry when you use their property. And the last thing about location is to make sure you also scout for sound. If you're gonna have a lot of dialogue and you're right next to the highway, you could do it. I don't recommend it but just know you're going to be re-recording all of those lines later in post-production. And you will lose something when you do that. Meaning that the feeling, especially if you have actors, the feeling, the tone of voice, all of the breath, it's going to be lost when you re-record it in ADR. People like Robert Downey Jr., really good. You probably wouldn't notice it as much, but there's something lost when you leave all of the location sound, the birds, the dogs, the neighborhood, the wind, you're gonna to have to rebuild all of that if it, this is a narrative piece. No matter the size of your project, but let's say you're doing just for yourself, you're doing your own videos, I really encourage get at least one person to help you. It's really hard to do this alone. I have Alicia behind the camera. The two of us have set up all the gear together. You have the logistics of just carrying your gear around, setting it up, but then you need a friendly person behind the camera to help you know how is it coming across. You can do your own content. I can flip the screen and I can watch myself and I've done that. But if you have at least one person, I guarantee you your content will be better because now you have someone who's listening, hopefully. I know some people who put a videographer or someone behind the camera who'll just hit record and then check out or go to their phone. That's not the kind of person I'm saying to help you. Find someone who's equally interested, who will really listen, pay attention to details. They'll tell you when you have a hair in the wrong place, or they'll tell you when something you said doesn't make sense. Get at least one person to help you, even if it's just to guard your camera gear while you're on the street trying to film something cool. It's really awful when someone steals from you or you trip and fall because you're carrying too many things and you break your expensive gear. We talked about gear management, that's one thing, but a helper can also give you more movement, camera movement, if you're the one who's on camera. Let them get that other perspective of being moving around you. Also, maybe they'll be up high while you're walking up the stairs. You can get a lot better shots if you have someone to help you set those up. In the end, if you have someone to help you that is trained in videography or just as interested in you, a friend who maybe wants to share help on different channels, you're gonna get better quality video and you will go a lot faster, and the chances of burning out are much more minimal. So you think of a film set, you have this luxurious situation. When I've directed films, um, sometimes I have 28 or 30 crew members, I have all the actors, and I only have to think about the performance in front of me and the screen. Other people have the earphones, they're checking the audio. Other people are making sure the lighting stays even, even as the sun goes over. Other people are checking that my actor's hair stays where it should stay. Other people are making sure the wardrobe is doing its thing. And so you have all of this support. Well, there's two of us here today. I'm doing content. We set up the lights and cameras together. And if you saw Alicia behind the camera, you would see she's listening to the audio, making sure that nothing weird is happening. It's not ducking out. And when we filmed ourselves, we've often had problems even though we know how to do this, there's just not enough hands, feet, and ears to go around. We've either had focus issues because we didn't notice while we were busy delivering our content that it had gone out of focus or that the audio had quit, maybe a battery or something. Simply put, it's easier with two and you can get a lot done with a crew of four or five. We've actually done entire cinematic productions with just our crew of four or five and only needing to add when we get more and more talent or a bigger camera. Again, you can make a feature film with a phone, you could, and it's been done at Sundance. Little by little, you may add bits and pieces to upgrade either the quality or the convenience. That's really what all this gear is about, quality and convenience. So 
for audio, um, Alicia has, you know, this H6N. We can do up to six channels on this. We could also do a single recorder, but we like this because of the limiters and compressors that it has. Essentially, you can get a recorder of some sort so that you have separate audio from your phone or your camera, which is better quality, and you're going to keep working on upgrading quality all along the way. We also have, with our recorder, we then have little transmitters. These come in various sizes as well. And um, we love the roads because you can put them anywhere. I'm just wearing one in my pocket and it's transmitting over to the recorder that Alicia has. And of course, a lav microphone. In this case, I'm just wearing my lav, but there are many ways you can also conceal one. And we'll have other videos about that too, because obviously in a movie, we don't wanna see the mic. Because audio is so important, Honestly, maybe we'll even show you some examples of behind the scenes, or even right now, we'll, we'll switch out the audio from my lab to one of these camera mics. This one is a little closer, probably sounds a little better. That one is a little further away, but audio is important. So even if you're just using your phone, you can find a little lav mic that you can get an adapter for a smartphone, you might need a dongle for this one, and then you can plug it into your phone for filming. Once you have a little bit of distance, you're gonna need something like a transmitter. So the point is with video making, pre-produce and write something that's really good and then your gear will grow with you. I can get audio with this or I can get audio with this and they all have different functions. This actually with the proximity is better for this purpose. Whereas in a movie, you know, you might have someone, a boom operator who is pointing this at my chest, between my chest and my mouth is the ideal place or in some cases, right at the mouth. This does a great job, but you don't need it to get started. So number four is a big one. You know, I've talked about the audio. There's three things you can do as you continue to grow and improve. Number one, make sure your audio is clean. Just don't have distracting other vo noises, don't have bumps, you know, mic bumps and all these problems. Make sure your audio is clean. And then as your skills grow, you can do more and more in post-production where the clean audio also becomes enhanced audio. That's the second thing. You can enhance it by using sound effects, or as I said before, if you end up removing audio because you were filming by the highway and you have to recreate it, now you have to look at the picture and say, well, I'm in a neighborhood, so I probably hear cars, and I probably hear kids, and I probably hear the birds, there's probably wind, and that's when you get into the whole world of sound design. Sound design includes effects, Foley, and then of course you add music as you go to finish and complete your video. If it's just a talking head teaching video like this, I'm probably not gonna add a lot of birds, but <laughs> there's some fun sounds that you could add if we wanted to put it in there. The key is make sure if you do sound design that it fits the message and it doesn't distract. And lastly is sound mixing and EQ. Some things can be done very simply right in Adobe but often we'll have a project where we take it completely out into other softwares. Sound mixing and EQ is the science of sound. I have a lot of friends and we have some on our team that do this very thing. It's like magic. When you come home from a shoot and then you find out that there was a terrible crackle or some high frequency, and usually we can hear it, but sometimes something happens and we have one good take that we really wanna use and that magical sound designer can also help us to fix the EQ so that we have that video that's usable again. Just to wrap it up, remember to write and pre-produce, plan ahead, pick a good location, bring at least one helper, and then if, if while you're pre-producing you realize you need a makeup person, a hair person, you need someone else doing camera while you're directing the actor, or if it's all you, how can you do this? Get that extra help. Remember to keep improving your sound quality and adding things that are helpful but not distracting. And if any of this is overwhelming, don't worry, here at YouTube, we've got all kinds of instruction on our channel and others where you can learn all of these skills and just keep adding to it. Don't hesitate to keep educating yourself and don't worry about if something seems daunting or maybe even if someone tells you they don't think you can do it. We're gonna be a resource for you here on this channel. Everything about video production, how to make money on YouTube, how to create content, and we want to be that resource to help you out so that you can continue to do great things 
Over the last 20 years, I've been learning and adding new skills both in life, things like this, and everything behind the camera and in production. If I can do it, I know you can too. We're your video allies. You've got this, we've got your back, and we can't wait to see what you create as you make better and better videos.